Hello there and thanks so much for joining me for another video. I'm Erin Eno and today we're going to be painting this loose fall watercolor floral. If you like this video please be sure to hit the like button and also share and if you want to see more videos like this please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos out. Now let's just jump in and get started. Today I'm using my Baohong Academy cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I've got my Royal Talons Van Gogh paints in my palette, a drawer of water, a paper towel, and I have four brushes. I have three in the Curry's 2500 series, a size 12 round, a size 10 round, and a size two round. And I have a size six round in their 2400 series. So I'm going to start with my size 12 round and I want to keep this palette warm and fall like and a little muted and I want to just do some kind of cream colored flowers. So I'm going to take some raw umber and I want to really water it down. I just want to really light cream color. That's way too much. It's okay. It's all good. And I'm going to add in just a little bit of yellow ochre just to warm it up a bit okay and I'm going to get most of it most of that pigment off my brush and I'm just going to do two really loose light flowers with just kind of ruffled edges on them that might still be even a little too much pigment I think I want a little more yellow in there. And just water it down just a little bit more. Even lighter than that. I'm sorry if it's so light that you guys are having a hard time seeing it, but we're gonna be adding some lines to it just to give it some texture. Okay, but I just wanna keep them really light to start. Okay, and I'm leaving white space in the middle. Oh. So I'm gonna tap off the excess water off my brush and go into that pigment and just kinda lightly add some to the outer edges of some of these petals. Just so I can see where they are a little better too. And some to the center. like so and that'll dry a little lighter as well and we can always go in and add more a little later which I think I may do once it dries just to do a little bit of glazing on it get that little mark out of there okay just like that so just want to keep it light and creamy color then I'm going to do another one like that a little down and to the right of it. Okay, so here, just loose. Okay, remember I'm leaving white space in the middle. And then tapping off the excess water, go back into that same pigment and just put a little bit towards the center and on some of the outer edges, just like that. Just to get the shape kind of defined a little bit. Okay, so there we have two cream colored flowers. Now I wanna to switch to my size 10 brush and I wanna do kind of like a rusty red um, a rusty brown color of a chrysanthemum kind of type flower. So I'm going to use my light oxide red. And I just want to tone it down a little bit. So I'm going to add in some of that raw umber just so it's not so crazy vivid. I do want soft 
colors here. A little bit more of the raw umber. That ought to do it. And I don't want my brush sopping wet. And I'm going to do a chrysanthemum kind of style flower over here. So I'm just basically just going to do these kind of daisy-like petals. And we're going to let this dry and go in and do another layer as well, just to give it some depth. I don't want to hit that flower that we just did. I don't want this really bleeding in like that. No biggie. It's all good. Okay, I'm leaving a little bit of white in the middle of this flower too. Make this a little bigger. And we're going to let that dry and come back and do another layer of glazing over top so it'll be wet on dry. And I'm going to do another one up here. And establish your center point first because this is going to hit that flower, okay? So we want to get the center point first and then we can start coming in to the edge of that other white or cream colored flower, just like that. Okay. Oh, I've missed my white in the center. I've kind of lost the center. It's okay. It's all good. And you've got to watch this flower too. So sometimes it's better to come from the flower beside it into the center. Then you're not so worried about mucking up the edge of that flower. These tips look a little wonky over here. Just gonna kind of define them a little better. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is mix up a little bit of a reddish brown color. So I'm gonna use that light red oxide again, and I'm going to mix in some burnt sienna. I probably didn't need the light oxide red. The burnt sienna was probably good enough because now I'm gonna to have to tone it down a bit. Just a little bit of sepia. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Now I just want to pop in um, a few oak leaves. No, you know what? I'm going to start with the acorns. I'm going to do an acorn here. And I wanted a little lighter on the right hand side and some shading on the left hand side, just like that. And we'll pop another one underneath this kind of chrysanthemum flower. Like so. And if this dries, a if these dry a little flat, we can always go in and tap in some shading on it once it's dry, once they're dry. Okay, so we've got two acorns. And then I think we'll do maybe a little, hmm, you know what? We're just gonna go right and do a couple of oak leaves. So I want it a little browner than what I've got here. So I'm going to take sepia. I've got a little bit of sepia in my palette over here. I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'm going to add in just a little bit of yellow ochre. Just so they're not, um, you know, too dark a brown. I could probably afford to put in some burnt sienna in there as well. 
Okay, just like that. I think that's good. Actually, you know what? Those acorns are a little dark. I'm gonna go in with my number six, just a damp brush, and just pick some of this up. This is a loose floral, but I do want things to have a little bit of shape to them. Okay, they're by no means realistic, but I don't want them to be flat. So just like that, that'll kind of soften up too. So now I'm gonna plunk in an oak leaf over here. We'll just fill this all in like so and this bottom edge of this oak leaf is kind of forming that shape of that cream colored flower so I'm going to dry off my brush go back into that same pigment and just tap some around some of the edges just to give it some shape I don't want to go in right now and do veining because it's still a little wet for that, I think, yeah. But we're just going to give it some shape. This can actually come up a little. There we go. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe we'll do another oak leaf kind of coming out of here. Like so. I should turn my paper because I'm not good at doing things at a different angle. Okay, so we've got another oak leaf. Tap in some extra pigment on this guy as well. Just for some shape. I think we can go in and draw a little bit of a vein on this guy now. Maybe some coming up here. We can always go in when it's a little drier as well, okay? So I wanna add a little bit of depth to these acorns now, that they're a little drier. Okay, just like that. So I'm gonna rinse and dry off my brush. And I'm not really blending this out, I'm just softening that edge. I'm not bringing it out too far. And it's got a little bit of a hard edge on this highlight that I don't really like. Same on that guy. It's okay, they don't have to be perfect. In fact, the edge of this guy is so not perfect, it's bothering me. Even though it's loose, I know, I get it, but. And I think I'll plunk another little acorn coming out of here. He's hiding behind that flower. It's also a little smaller. So I think I will also do another oak leaf. coming out of behind this flower here. Just like that. And 
we'll fill him all in. It's a little lighter than the other guys, but that's okay. Just add a little bit more pigment to him. Just to darken it up just a little bit. It's kind of a wonky looking oak leaf. It's okay. I'm gonna mix up a little more of that color for some veining. Tap some around the edges, like so. Okay, and while I've got this color going, I can heavy up some of the veins on these guys. That might be a little heavy. Just soften that up a bit. There we go. That's good. Now I'm going to use this same kind of that same color, yellowy color that we used for the cream color flowers, just for the caps of these acorns. And then we're not gonna go in and put all the texture in. This is loose, we don't need to go crazy with it. I just will add a little bit of shading to it, just to give it some depth, like that. This one's behind that flower, so we don't need to worry about that. And we're gonna go in with that dark brown and see if it's too soon to do the veining on this one. I think it should be okay. That works. Might be a little heavy, but I'm okay with that. So now that those red flowers are dry, I'm gonna go back to my number 10 brush Use that same red that we used, and we're going to go back and do that second layer, the glazing on these guys. This is just going to give it some depth. You can go all the way out if you want, you can just do it closer to the center. Remember to be careful where you hit that cream color flower so you don't change the shape of that one too much. Okay, so you can see it's just giving it a little kick of depth. Like that. Now we can also go back in and add a little sepia to that color to deepen it up even more and just go towards the center, just a little bit. And while those are a little damp, I'm gonna take some sepia, water it down a bit. Actually, no, I'm gonna use it pretty full strength. And I'm just gonna tap in the center of these guys. and it can bleed out in some areas. I do want it to just kind of have some bleeds in it, like that. Now I'm gonna go and take my number six brush again, and we're gonna go back to that creamy kind of yellow. Okay, and we're just gonna do some glazing to get some more depth out of these cream color flowers. So we're just gonna go in, just put some lines in, from the center out. You can put some in between some of the petals just to define them a little better. But I don't want anything too harsh. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse and draw off my brush and just soften up some of these lines. 
like so. We'll do the same thing to this guy. Just like that. Rinse and dry off my brush. Soften some of them up. And then I think I'll just put a little bit of a hint of one of those red flowers. That's the wrong color. I can't remember what I mixed for that, these red flowers now. Oh well. We're about to find out if I can mix it close enough. Let's see. And I just want to put a little hint of one. Actually, just put a little hint of one here. It's a little darker, but if it's kind of hidden behind this, these flowers, it would be darker. So it's all good. But the bleeding on this has gone crazy, so I'm going to pick some of that up. I did not want it to go out that far. It really ran away on me. Oh, you know what? I need oak leaves down there. That's what I need. Let's go back to our oak leaf color. I'm going to have to mix up a little bit more. So just another couple of oak leaves down here. I'm going to do it this way. I can't do it upside down. That's going to be behind that little flower. Like so. I know that's a little light. We'll work on it in a minute. I just want to kind of get it in place there. And maybe I'll do one coming out from behind these acorns. Again, I can't paint upside down. Like that. I stuck my hand in it. Just going to tap some pigment in here. Yes, these are not the best oak leaves in the world. It's all okay. Let me bring this one out a little bit. Maybe I would have been better off painting it upside down. You get the idea, right? It kind of looks like an oak leaf. A little different color than the other one, but I'm okay with that. Just tap it in here to get some shading and some shape. Kind of ignore where I screwed that up. That is a really bad oak leaf. It's okay. I'll live with it. Now I'm just going to add another layer to this flower in here. A few more strokes on these guys. Then I'm going to go into my sepia and I'm just going to tone it down a bit with some of these other browns so it's not like completely dark and I'm going to tap in 
some stamens here. Um, I'm going to leave some white just so it's not solid, even though the centers are not going to be shiny. I get that, but if you just do it solid, it kind of takes all the life out of it. We would leave a little bit of white, just makes it look a little, a little more alive. So now I'm going to go in to the dark color here, which is, has some sepia in it, and just do some veins on these last guys. I should have switched my smaller brush. I'll probably go over that once it's dry. Then I'm going to add just a darker line of brown underneath the cap of these acorns. I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush and just soften it out. I'm not bringing it down very far, I'm just softening the edge like that. Now I'm going to go into straight sepia because I want this quite dark and I'm just going to do some centers on these guys. Again, not filling it in completely and hopefully it's dry enough that it won't bleed too much now. And I think, look, it's missing something. I don't know if I like the balance of it the way it is right now. I think I just want to add one little pop of another red flower. And maybe just do a hint of one just coming out over here. We're not even going to do the center on this or anything. It's just going to be a little pop of color over there. And we'll just use it to kind of define the shape of that cream colored flower. Just like that. We could probably afford to have another one up here too. Just a little bit. Okay, it just kind of anchors those cream colored flowers. I kind of went heavy on the paint there. I'm going to pick some of it up. And then just fix up those funny paper towel marks. And I think that's good. Now, one last thing. I'm going to go in with my number two. No, actually two last things. Sorry, I lied. Just wanted to fix up the veining on these guys. Just some light lines. Just like that. And then I think it will add a little bit of that red just in here just to make it look like there's not a lot of white space going on in here. You know, you can normally fill it in with greenery, but we're not really doing greenery here. So that's a little bit of a restriction we have. And you know what? I think I'm going to I think I'm going to make these flowers go over this big cream colored one. And I know I'm not using the right size brush, but I just think that looks a little, a little better. Now, one last thing. This is the last thing. I'm going to do some twigs because I like to put twigs in a lot of my arrangements. It just gives them a little bit of texture and a little bit of life. So I'm just going to do some squiggly twigs. Maybe have one come down here. 
You can use a liner brush for this. I was going to use my liner brush, but I thought, no, not everyone has a liner brush. So I just wanted to do it with just a regular, very small brush. Okay, it just fills in some space and like I say, it gives it some texture. I could easily get carried away with twigs. I love putting them in my floral arrangements, but I guess I have to show a little bit of restraint. Just do a little short one up here. I just like them. I don't know why. Um, kind of have one coming out. You know, I'll have one coming out from behind here. And I think I better stop because I could ruin it. One little thing, this acorn's looking a little flat. I'm gonna give him some shading. And there is your finished fall watercolor floral. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. And as always, if you give this a try and you're on Instagram, please be sure to share your work and tag me so I can have a look. That's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.